Welcome to Dupo Remo. Oh, okay. So, sorry. I, I got off, off target there. I guess the studios have these, these ideas, these perceptions of what men will go to and what women will go to. And I complained about that as being really short-sighted and really wrong. Yeah, you, you said people are better than that. Yeah. People are people. I, They're all different. It people are people, so why should it be yeah. that you and I should get along so awfully? So we're different colors and we're different creeds. And different people have different needs. So what? It's obvious you hate me, though I've done I've done nothing wrong. You haven't even met me, so what could you have done? I don't understand what makes a man hate another man. But yeah, I mean, that was your point, is that people are better than that. They're not just some narrow-minded, short-sighted, stupid things like sheep that are led around just by a dog that barks and scares them one way or the other. Or cows, cattle that'll just go wherever. We're better than that. We have thinking minds that can look at something and say, hey, that looks like a kind of a story that I'd be interested in. Instead of looking at it, seeing it, and then go, oh, Snow White... Oh, no thanks. Oh, Mars is in the title. That must be a sci-fi. So I thought it was just... What? That goes right back into that subject. And, and I, I felt like we had to revisit it because of something that happened to me over the weekend. I, I went on a road trip with my brother and my two sisters and my brother-in-law. And we were all in a car, driving and driving. And my littlest sister just finished reading The Hunger Games. And my... Other sister, my big sister, if you will, has read all three and absolutely devoured them. I mean, she loved that book the way – I'm sorry, those books the way that your wife loved the K. Scarpetta books or, uh-huh. or whatever the F she loved. Why are we talking about this? I don't know. Stop it. I thought that that was a really interesting experience that I read The Hunger Games and my two sisters read The Hunger Games. And all of us really, really enjoyed it. And then – this movie is coming out, and probably by the time this hits the air, it's going to be right around the corner. Right. A big movie based on this book, and my big sister is so excited about it, and, you know, what are they going to do th- with this, and who's playing what? And But my little sister was worried that it was going to have to be compromised from what she'd read in the book because... You know, the book was so violent, and, and, right. and it's like, well, how, how do you make a movie like that for... Everybody. Yeah, how do you make it without it being an R-rated movie with all the violence and death that's going on? This is an American Idol where everybody's dead at the end except for the winner. <laughs> Instead of, yeah, they just got voted off. When we're recording this, it's too early to know what the ad campaign is going to be. But I told my sisters, well, I'll bet there's going to be commercials that are aimed at men that are all going to be about... The sporting event, the, 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 the kill off. The American Idol to the death. And then there will be TV spots that are aimed at girls that will be about, you know, this is Katniss and she likes this guy and another guy really likes her and who will she choose and love is good and pretty dress that glows. Or is that the next one? fire. No, oh, that's the I first one. I think she has uh, all sorts of pretty dresses. And uh, Oh, yeah, she spins in her dress on the first one and, and it lights up or something. I'm semi-hard just thinking about it. Yeah. And so I I said, well, you know, because this is something unlike Twilight where they can have their cake and eat it too. I'm not going to talk about whether Twilight is a quality product or not, but it clearly is aimed toward females, toward young women, middle-aged women, fat women. (laughs) <laughs> and there's not – it doesn't offer something for guys. Now, I, you know, maybe I'm coming from a, a position of ignorance and maybe like all the vampire family bickering and the werewolf interaction is something that dudes can get their ha- hands around. But it repelled me like a friggin' cross at, at Dracula's coffin. Just all the – it was so top-heavy toward – teenage girl high school girl bullshit right that it chased me away with torches and pitchforks but hunger games doesn't have that or it it may have that because it's got a teenage protagonist and and she's a girl and there's a love triangle but 
it's got enough other stuff going on that it that isn't all there is to it. If I were describing to you what the Hunger Games story was, I might barely touch on the love triangle right. thing because what I took from it was this dystopian future, a really awful future. And this girl who's strong and, and takes the place of her sister then is forced to fight for the amusement of the rich to the death with a bunch of other young people and all that. And just, you know, ooh, the ingenuity of this girl and, and who she chooses to latch on to. And, and, you know, it's like, do I kill this guy that, that I've grown to like? Because that's what the rules of the game say and all that. It just, oh, all this really fantastic stuff that appeals to me. And so I think that they've, they've got a much shorter road to travel to success uh -huh. because it's not alienating to one of the genders. Right. Anyhow, so, so we were having this conversation because it was a long drive where I was talking about that. Because every generation has their new kids on the block or in sync or whatever it is where one gender is super excited about it and the other, it's just, oh, they friggin' hate it. Justin and I think Bieber. right now, well, okay, maybe it's Justin Bieber, but I, I hate Twilight a hell of a lot more than I hate Justin Bieber. But of course, I hate the Transformers movies a hell of a lot more than I okay. hate Twilight. I was but, just uh, going along with the theme of No, no, I know. Bands. And I, I realize that I'm just talking and talking, but we'll bump this into like six episodes, so good, hopefully good. that's fine. We can use it every day in February as Nanopodmo. We just give you a two-minute segments of it. No, no, I don't think you said Nanopodmo because it's... Oh, that's right, because that's National Novel Podcasting Month. It has to be Napo -re -re -rem Remo. Napo Remo? I think that's what we Wait, came up with because it's National, National Podcast, Podcast Recording, Recording Month. Month. Well, you know, I think that was November or December. Who yeah, cares? I think we made it up, so it's February. Okay, so maybe it's... Okay, what would Dune Steve? Du Dupo Remo? Dupo Remo, yeah. What, Dune Steve... Dune Steve Podcast, podcast recording, recording Month? Recording month. All right, it's Dupo Remo. <laughs> so I was having this conversation with my sisters about that and saying, you know, that, that that's cool because my little sister is married, but... I think her husband will go see Hunger Games with her. It's not one where she has to get together with her old high school friends or whatever and go see it. And I'm looking forward to it as much as they are. You know, well, this is going to be really cool and we can all talk about it. But anyhow, my brother-in-law is like, well, I don't know what Hunger Games is about. And I was like, oh, no, you'll, you'll dig it. Because, you know, it's a science fiction story set in the future. And the future is just a really grimy, horrible, unfair place to live. And my sister interrupted me. And she said, you know, I'm so glad that nobody told me that it was a science fiction story before I read it. Because I never would have read it if I had heard that. And I was like, what, what, wait, what? Just because you knew it was set in the future, you wouldn't have read it? She's like, no. And so I swallowed because you and I had had this conversation before <laughs> where I was like, the studios are wrong. They have no idea what they're talking about. And I said, well... Okay, but there's this, this movie coming out called John Carter. And the studio changed the title from John Carter of Mars to John Carter because they were afraid that people like you, that women wouldn't want to go see it if it had Mars in the title. That's not true, is it? And she said, ew, it has Mars in it? I was like, oh, no. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it takes place on Mars and she's like, oh, no, I just thought it was this movie about a hot dude with long hair. <laughs> and I said, so you don't want to see it now that you know it's actually called John Carter of Mars? She's like, well, no, I don't really like that kind of stuff. And I said, like, but when it was called just John Carter, you wanted to see it. And she's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, no. And then I thought of that other one. And I said, well, remember that Zac Efron movie, Charlie St. Cloud? That was originally called The Death and Life of Charlie St. Cloud. Would you not have gone to see that had it been called The Death and Life of Charlie St. Cloud? And she's like, well, no, because then I would have known it had death in it. And I was mortified, dude. I'm driving <laughs> along and I'm like, oh, no, my sister is reinforcing these fucked up beliefs that the studio has. Oh, no. Yeah, you're like, this is somebody that you respect, that you like, that, heck, she's related to you, so she can't be too much different from you. <laughs> Here's a question. Did you ask your uh, brother-in-law if he would have gone to see the movie if it was called A Princess of Mars? 
instead of John Carter of Mars? I didn't. I didn't ask him that, but I think they would have been crazy to call it a Princess of Mars. Mostly just because Disney practically owns the trademark on the word princess. And it is a Disney movie. It's a Disney movie. There you go. So, she could be right in there with all the other princesses. You could buy the Barbie of her. You got Rapunzel and you got uh, Tiana and you got Cinderella and you got Sleeping Beauty and you got Deja Thoris right there, <laughs> red skinned and wearing like nothing. Just a little. Okay, look, if somebody hears this episode and would like to do a mock <laughs> Disney princesses image or poster or something like that that has Deja Thoris there, I will send you something. I'll send you a – do we have anything I can send them? We could give them a free shirt with Why Not on it. Okay, I will send you a free Dune Steve Why Not t-shirt or the – Chalupa for you one, whichever you prefer. Or Chalupa for you fish. But the problem is, oh, I was going to say, what if three or four people do it? Nobody listens to this. For yeah, people. nobody does. You don't have to worry. Our money is safe in our hands, our pockets. Well, see, I was just shocked. I, I was bummed out to hear her say this because she, she's not a stupid person. She's read a book for pleasure. And so I said, so you, you wouldn't go see a movie called John Carter of Mars just because of the title. But you would go see a movie called John Carter. And when you get to the theater and you buy your ticket, you see the poster. And it's got a great big green guy with six arms and a spaceship and stuff on the poster. Then you still buy the ticket because, oh, it doesn't have Mars in it. And she's like, oh, no, no. If I saw an alien on the poster, no, I wouldn't go to it then. I was like, oh. <laughs> that Gets My Goat will be continued next time. That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons, Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives License. This show is lame. As lame as Rich Outfield.